This video gives an introduction to citations, how to increase your citations and reach a broader academic audience. We'll address the following questions. How are citations measured? What are citations used for? What are some of the limitations of using citations? And how you can improve your citations? In basic terms, a citation is an acknowledgement of your research being mentioned or used in another person's work. For you to receive that citation, the other person needs to have referenced your work correctly. These individual citations are often grouped, for example, by individual researcher, institution, or subject area, and then measured as an indicator of the research reach. Citations in this respect are measured by several databases, and there are differences between these databases. On the slide, you can see three databases compared, Google Scholar, Scopus, and Web of Science. These are three of the major databases you are likely to draw your citation counts from. Google Scholar citations are curated by algorithms. This can cause problems as there has been examples of references in library catalogs, for example, being counted by Google's algorithms as legitimate citations. These kind of issues mean that Google Scholar citation counts can be gamed. In one fairly extreme example, someone added lists of random references to an unrelated website, and these references were counted by Google Scholar as legitimate citations. This should therefore be kept in mind when looking at citations through Google Scholar. Though remember that Google Scholar is expected to have higher citation counts as it is the largest database. Scopus is more limited than Google Scholar in its coverage as it has more strict indexing rules. This means that Scopus often underestimates citations, however the citations it does show will be legitimate. Scopus is also more manual than Google Scholar and therefore if you notice anything incorrect with your Scopus profile, any changes need to be requested by yourself and then altered manually by Scopus. This means corrections can take time. Web of Science is another limited database in its coverage. Web of Science was recently bought by Publons and is linked to Researcher ID. There is a lot of overlap between Web of Science and Scopus, so the advantages and disadvantages are similar. However, the coverage between the two will vary. Overall, there is some personal preference involved when considering which database to use when analyzing your citations. However, you will find different people may ask for data from different databases. It's therefore important to keep an eye on your profiles across different databases. So what are citations used for? One of the main uses is for research assessment, specifically in league tables. At Essex, citations per publication is a key performance indicator. Most UK institutions have a KPI based on citations, as citations are used in league tables. We also look at performance on a departmental level, but there are no set targets for this. As a researcher, you might want to highlight citations in a grant proposal. If you are doing this, you need to think about responsible metrics. This means using the measures in a responsible way, not just using the numbers on their own. There are several different research metrics you could use, and there are positives and negatives to each. However, we would recommend that you do not use the H-index as a citation measure unless you are asked for it. The H-index attempts to measure productivity against citations. If you have an H-index of 15, you have 15 papers with at least 15 citations, but this doesn't tell you the whole story, and therefore can be a very misleading metric. If you are specifically asked for your H-index, use Google Staller to get this figure as it will be higher. A better metric to use is the Field Weighted Citation Index, or FWCI. With FWCI, a score of 1 means you are receiving the expected number of citations for your field and the format of your work. A score of 2.5 would be 2.5 times more citations than expected. This can be especially helpful for subject areas that don't receive high numbers of citations. However, the context matters with FWCI, so you shouldn't just state this figure alone. When using any citation measures, it's important to be aware of what people are asking you and try to give context and some qualitative information, not just the numbers. Citation information should therefore be used as additional details. You should also always list the source of the figure you are giving and should always use at least two different measures. It's also good to remember that speaking about the impact of your research usually has more value than metrics alone. As mentioned, one of the main reasons citations are used is to measure research performance, specifically in league tables. Both Times Higher Education and QS use citations for the league tables. A high percentage of the end score in these league tables is based on citations. However, it is not clear how the citations are used to create their scores. These league tables also do not consider the limitations of citations. On the slide is an example of a highly cited research paper. This paper had a field-weighted citation impact of 40, meaning it was cited 40 times more than expected. 
However, these citations were mostly negative citations. This paper was actually reporting on government-funded research labeled as one of the greatest medical scandals of the 21st century. The alt metrics for this paper are also very high, as the story was picked up by the press. This example highlights how metrics alone don't always show clear judgments on research. There are also other limitations to using citations. Firstly, the way databases index their content affects citations. As mentioned earlier, citation counts are likely to be much higher in Google Scholar than Scopus. In addition to this, publishing practices differ. For example, in economics, there are a lot of working papers. These would be picked up by Google Scholar, but not Scopus. League tables don't consider this, and therefore some subject areas are not fairly represented in league tables. Citation information can also be unstable for smaller groups or institutions. This is especially true of FWCI. Times Higher Education, for example, highlighted a UK institution as really stepping up in the league tables, and it turned out it was a smaller institution that had a collaborative part-time researcher working on a collaborative study. This study had a huge number of contributors and was publishing papers regularly. These papers were having a big impact on the small institution's average citation count as they published a small number of papers. League tables don't represent this. Citation information is not always used responsibly, and this can be seen at all levels. For example, in individual research funders, institutions, and more. But there are, of course, advantages to using citations. For example, as an individual researcher, citations allow you to track how your work is being used by other academics, which can lead to future research collaboration. Citations also ensure you get credit for your work. Now we're going to look at how to improve your citations. An important first step to making sure your work is well cited is to choose the most appropriate outlet for your work. Think about the audience of the journal you're considering submitting your paper to. If you think the audience for this journal is similar to those who would be interested in your work, you will have a captive audience who will, can get the ball rolling with citing your work. Similarly, think about the scope of the journal of the publisher you're submitting your work to. The closer the fit between your research and the journal's scope, the more likely the audience that the journal already has will be interested in your work, thus making them more likely to cite it. You can also look out for special editions or topics that are relevant to your research. Again, that will mean the audience to that special issue will already have an interest in your topic. When selecting a journal to publish in, you might want to look at the journal impact factor. The impact factor is a measure reflecting the annual average number of citations to recent articles published in that journal. This can be useful to gain an idea of how much you could be cited in this journal, but this alone shouldn't be the deciding factor, as making sure your research is a good fit for the journal is more important. Another great way to improve your citations is to publish your work open access. Publishing open access means your paper is free to read for everyone, regardless of whether they are affiliated with an institution. By ensuring everyone can read the full text of your work, it will make it more likely that it will be cited. Thinking carefully about your title and abstract can also help improve your citations. The title and abstract are usually the first thing a reader sees and influences whether they will read on. You should therefore keep the title short and informative as this will make it more likely a reader will click onto your research when looking at results from a literature search or browsing a journal. The first step to being cited is being read. Make sure to use the keywords from your research area in your title and repeat these words in your abstract. It's also a good idea to include additional keywords on submission that are synonyms of your original keywords. These will be added to your paper's metadata and make it more likely that your work will be discovered through literature searching. As well as the title and abstract details, it's important to keep author details consistent for discoverability. When submitting your work for publication and across different online research profiles, make sure your name is written in the same way. For example, if your name is John Edward Smith on one online profile, make sure it doesn't appear as John E. Smith on another. Doing this ensures correct attribution to yourself as a researcher and to your institution. It also means readers can more successfully perform author searches for your work. Again, making your work easier to find makes it more likely to be cited. Sharing your research data is another great way to improve your citations. You can share your data by uploading it to online repositories and services. There are lots of different repositories out there, and the university also has an institutional data repository. The UK Data Service is another good example. It is a national data service that provides research access to a range of social and economic data collections, including UK census data and government-funded surveys. Sharing your data through those platforms 
increases the transparency of your work, decreases duplication of effort, and increases citations. Sharing your work is the underlying principle that will help to increase your citations, and there are a large number of ways you can do this. For example, you can share your work through social media if you are using those platforms. It's good to establish whether your intended audience is using those platforms as well. In some cases, for example, Twitter could be great, whereas in other research areas you might be better using LinkedIn or Facebook. You can also, of course, share your work across multiple platforms and tag other researchers or relevant institutions or organizations to spread the word. You can also include links to your research in your email signature or simply email people who have expressed an interest in your work. You can also write blog posts and less formal ways of writing can be really useful for, for reaching audiences that might need to be introduced to your research. Academic social media platforms such as ResearchGate and Academia.edu can also be used to share your work, but do remember to consider copyright restrictions if you are uploading the full text. If you own the copyright to your work, this shouldn't be a problem, but if you are assigned rights to the publisher, you will need to check their policies. Talking about your work is perhaps the most obvious example of sharing your work, but it's a really important one. You'll have spent a lot of time on your paper, so make sure to share it. A great place to start talking about your work is relevant conferences. This could be responding to a call for presentations and delivering a formal presentation, sharing your research in a lightning talk, or even attending a conference as a delegate and speaking to colleagues during networking sessions about your work. Conferences, whether online or in person, are a really good place to share your work. You can also share your work by looking further than the academic community and collaborating with organizations or the media. Think about the impact your work might have, or organizations or charities that might be interested or could help promote it. Pay attention to news stories and think about if your research is relevant to the news, as this can have a big impact on citations. The university's comms and external relations team can also help with sharing your work in this way. Ultimately, the best way to improve your academic reach and increase your citations is to increase the visibility of your work. As we've shown, this affects stages across the publishing process, from writing your paper and choosing a journal to publish in, to sharing your work after publication. If you're strategic with these things throughout, your research is much more likely to gain more citations. But remember, citations alone do not reflect research performance. Using metrics responsibly is really important when thinking about your academic reach. Thank you for watching this video on how to reach academic audiences and improve your citations. If you have any questions, please do get in touch with us in the library.